So now I'm going to demonstrate the examination of the skin and nails. Skin is examined mainly by inspection and some palpation. So we'll take a look at that. And again, we'll start with the head and move down the body. Good exposure is important. When we look at the head, remember we also want to examine all the skin structures, the hair being a very important skin structure. You want to pull back the hair so you can examine the scalp. And also looking very closely for lesions, but also broken hairs or missing hairs that might be indicative of uh, diseases of the hair follicle itself. All right. And then you just examine looking deliberately, noticing some freckles. Close your eyes gently. He's also got some freckles here, a little bit of acneform lesions there. Good. And now we're going to move to the back and examine the head from the back. Again, exposing the scalp. Back of the neck, very thick skin on the back of the neck. It's not an uncommon place to find uh, some skin structure problems. Now I'm going to expose the back. So inspecting the back, we can see a large number of pigmented lesions. Be sure to inspect down both sides, also down to the buttocks and the posterior aspect of the arms can be inspected at this time. A little bit of sunburn here. And then these areas should be palpated. So any abnormal areas should be palpated. Most of these lesions are macules. In other words, they are not raised and I cannot detect them by palpation. Some, however, are slightly raised. Here's an example. Here's another example. And this here is firm fibrotic lesion, site of a previous uh, removal of a lesion. This is a keloid or excessive scar in the skin. A little acneform lesion here, but most of the rest of these are completely uh, not palpable. Next, <clears throat> we'll move back to the front, working our way down the body. Again, you want good exposure. And we're going to examine the anterior chest. Examine individual lesions. This is a small vascular lesion. You can tell that because I can, with pressure, make it go away, and then it will refill again slowly. OK, so that's a, a small, probably arterial venous malformation. So we examine the entire chest, palpating areas of these lesions. Most, if not all, of these are macular. Next, we're going to examine the arm. So we want to fully expose the arm, including the axilla, and then posterior aspect of the arm. And we can notice already in this young man the demarcation of the highly sun-exposed areas from the less sun-exposed areas. And on the other arm, much the same thing as noted from behind, little sunburn last weekend. All right. And then palms, dorsum of the hand. Now we're going to move down to the legs. We will come back to examine the nails uh, at the end of this. So let's have you lie down on your back. Once again, we want to expose the, the legs for the skin exam. We can do one leg at a time. And again, examining multiple pigmented lesions, all of which are macular. And then be sure to inspect, bend your knee, posterior aspect of the leg. soles of the feet, 
very important skin structures, very thick skin on the sole of the feet, normal calluses <clears throat> over the heel, under the first metatarsal head, uh, a little more callus than we would expect under the uh, middle of the metatarsal arch in this young man. Be sure to inspect between the toes and the interdigital spaces and examine the nails. And then we repeat that process for the other leg. Okay, let's bend the leg up. Sole of the foot again. And then interdigital spaces. And nails. Aside from the moles, this all uh, looks very normal. And we'll examine the fingernails. Fingernails are very, very important skin structure and can tell us a lot about the patient and the patient's physiology. We'll start with uh, his right thumb and point out the important parts of the nail and the things that we want to look at. So the nail grows out of the nail matrix, which is back here under the nail fold. Uh, and it may extend uh, several millimeters uh, behind the nail. The nail has a cuticle, which grows out onto the nail plate and should be adherent to the nail plate. If the cuticle is coming loose from the nail plate, that may in fact be indicative of uh, problems with the nail growth. The lateral nail folds, both here and here, should also be adherent to the nail. And then we look at the nail margin, which also should be adherent. There should not be any undermining at the nail margin. The lunula is this white structure, and distal to the lunula is the, the nail plate uh, and the nail bed. This nail bed is very pink, and that pinkness it results from the extensive capillary network that uh, is underneath the nail plate. You can demonstrate that. I'm going to just push on the nail plate here with uh, this uh, Q-tip handle, and you'll see, you should see the nail plate blanch underneath. And then it pinks back up. And well, that pressure is forcing the blood out of that very rich capillary network underneath the nail. When we look at the nails, we're not only looking at those structures, but also the color of the nail and the nail plate itself. Normally, there may be ridging of the nail plate. If we zoom in on this, we may be able to see some slight ridging that runs longitudinally. That's uh, quite normal. If we see pits, little erosions in the nail plate, that's very abnormal. Also, the color of the nail is important. There are several conditions that will discolor the nail, uh, and those are important to make note of. Now we're going to look at the nails of the other fingers. It's important to examine all of the nails individually, as there may be abnormalities in one, such as splinter hemorrhages, loss of the cuticle, uh, paronychia, which would be infections of the nail folds, uh, or the lateral margin of the nail. Uh, or loss of adherence of the nail plate uh, that would only be seen in, in one nail. So we do that and be sure to examine uh, both hands, thumb and fingers. Now, as always, the best way to compare what's normal and abnormal is right to left. So you can notice on this hand, it has a very large lunula in the thumb and they get progressively smaller as we move laterally, but that's true on both hands, so it's uh, completely normal. The last thing you really want to look at for uh, examining the nails and the distal fingers is for clubbing. So clubbing is an abnormality at the uh, growth of the nail here in the uh, nail recess. The, there will be softening of this uh, 
growth area of the nail, and then loss of the normal angulation of the nail uh, will become evident. So we will take a look at that. Uh, if we can just examine this nail normally, can we zoom in on that? Get real tight. Real, get real tight on that if you can. That's as tight as I can get. They're just not showing. Oh, there we go. Okay, who's, whose camera is this? This is mine. Okay. Let's see, how do we want to do this? Tell me if I'm breaking your finger off. Okay, so the normal nail, if you follow from the distal interphalangeal joint or the interphalangeal joint here on the thumb, and consider this area flat, you'll notice that the nail itself is angled in a dorsal direction about 10 to 15 degrees, and that is quite normal. That angle is lost in clubbing. The other thing that's evident in clubbing, as I mentioned, is softening of the nail uh, at its growth area here proximal. And that is demonstrated by just pushing on that area and it'll feel kind of soft and squishy. Uh, it really does not occur here, he's very firm. Another way to demonstrate this angle is to have the thumbs placed together. If we can, maybe this way. Okay, and because of that dorsal angulation of the nail, it creates this diamond shape uh, between the nails. In the presence of clubbing, that dorsal angulation is lost, and therefore the distal interphalange, the distal portion of the phalanx will lay right up against one another in this area, and that diamond shape will be lost. So that's another good way to look at that loss of angulation. Another important part of the examination of the nails in appropriate clinical situation is examination of the nail fold capillaries. There are actually very few places in the body where you can actually see the capillary blood flow. You can in the fundus, but also in the nail folds. The capillaries extend out over the, uh, in the nail fold and then turn around and come back towards the uh, base of the nail. The way to examine them, you have to put something on the nail fold in order to get rid of glare. Immersion oil works best, but a little KY jelly also is useful. <clears throat> and then I observe with the ophthalmoscope turn to about a plus 12 to start your examination, and then you move in gradually to examine the nail fold just proximal to the cuticle. This takes a lot of practice and you usually need to go up to about a plus 20 to see the nail folds quite well. It takes practice. The nail fold should look like a picket fence and if there is loss of the nail fold capillaries, then that may in, be indicative of a more serious vascular problem. Uh, this is particularly important to do in uh, people with ray nodes, uh, as the presence of abnormalities of the nail folds uh, greatly increases the probability of underlying scleroderma. So practice this when you have time. It's a very useful skill and uh, is uh, quite easy to learn if you spend some time at it. That completes the skin examination except for one very important part, which is to note the distribution of hair uh, throughout your examination. Hair on the scalp, any pattern of balding, facial hair uh, in both men and women, the extent of that hair distribution, hair distribution onto the extremities, uh, particularly on the feet where a loss of hair could be indicative of uh, poor circulation. It's important to note uh, in, your, in your notes for future reference. So that completes the examination of the skin and the major skin structures.